Dinosaur Jr., we have Sweep It Into Space, uh, which was released, um, I think, the 30th of April or so. We just didn't get to talk about it last, last week. But anyways, it is uh, 12 songs, 44 minutes long, or 45 minutes long. Yeah. Um, Dinosaur Jr. have been a group for a long time. They made some uh, good rock back in the like early 2000s, I think the late 90s, I believe. They're one of their biggest songs. I, mean, I see a are, dinosaur are they... thing from 1985. Oh, that's hilarious. Here. Then there you go. So, mid-80s. Because I know uh, their biggest song is going to be Feel the Pain. If you're like a big uh, rock uh, person, whatnot, you'll definitely know Feel the Pain. Um, Start Chopin's also a good song and stuff that they've had. So they've been around forever since I, like, since I've been listening to music, obviously. Um, but anyways, so... This is an interesting album because we've had a bunch of Uncle Rock. So speaking of Uncle Rap and everything, we've had a bunch of artists that last year that made albums. You had Psychedelic Furs. Um, you had, uh, why can't I think? Flaming Lips that came yeah. out with the album as well. You had uh, uh, Foo Fighters came out with some stuff. Incubus came out with some stuff. Yeah. And some of it, fantastic. Psychedelic Furs album was very good. Incubus's Trust Fall Side B is like the pinnacle of what you, sh you could do with rock in the, you know, the 20s. And then you had Flaming Lips, which was just, or you saw Doves as well, which Doves was yeah. fantastic. You, but the Flaming Lips was more of that Uncle Rocky. And this sits somewhat in, like in the middle of all of that, where it has some parts of a kind of uninspired Uncle Rock, and then it has some parts that's a, that are actually pretty good as well. So it's kind of like that happy medium, I guess. If that makes sense for the yeah. album. Because um, they had some singles that came out. Like it starts with I Ain't, which I think is actually a pretty good track for it to um, to uh, start off on. It's like your typical like alt-rock song. It kind of gets into that. It gets you more into that like 90s theme, like, like post-grunge style going into that more alt-rock. Or, like, alt very post-grunge. Um, that's something that's kept out through like Dinosaur Jr. the whole time. E it's very post-grunge. Exactly. And that's something that... I wish they would experiment more. I kind of go the Doves route where Doves did like a bunch of different sounds within their last album, kind of still sticking true to themselves, but pushed a lot of further. Um, what within their post grunge work for this album was very good post grunge. It was like um, for like that style of air and everything It's fantastic. But the issue is it's that throughout pretty much the entirety of the album, which after a while, it just gets monotonous and it can kind of, you can kind of get zoned out of it and everything and it can sound very monotone because it gets you to a level and then it just stays at that level. It's just you perfect one trick, you know, you do one kickflip and you just do a kickflip 45,000 times in a row. It's like, okay, cool. Kickflips are like a fun yeah. trick. It's really cool that you could do that, but try something else. Maybe try a 360 pop shove it, you know, do something new with your life. It's a really random skateboard stuff. I don't know why that popped up, but who knows? Mm, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater is under the chat. <laughs> I mean, like, I could imagine some of these songs in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, I guess, to continue that analogy. That's actually but, funny. You know, um, I can see that. So, like, To Be Waiting is about, like, the intersection of what I liked the most of this album is the third song in. And I think that you kind of have to get past, like, the, um, the lead singer, Dinosaur Jr., the, the state of his voice at this point. <laughs> um, there are times at which he's, like, definitely uh, straining what those pipes can do. And, like, you can feel it. But there's also, like, on almost... I mean, not quite, but almost like a Lou Reedus kind of way in the age, like with age, like a different sort of like characteristic comes to the voice. That I mean, look at, almost Tom, I mean, look, yeah. at, look at Tom York's vocals for sure yeah. and stuff. So again, wrong comparisons to make here, but like but, in the great vein, but like I wouldn't compare this like Lou Reed or Tom York and well, like, yeah, vocal yeah, abilities yeah. here, right? But like it, it, the gravelly nature of it adds a little bit of a characteristic that can work in some songs, but mm -hmm. only if you know how to use it. It exactly. doesn't always work here, but I think To Be Waiting was the closest thing where it's like- To Be Waiting is a fantastic song. A melancholy post-grunge, like sort of, it, it fits like the state of the voice voice fits what the um, song is like trying to exactly. convey. Exactly. There's, there's a thing that I think issues like Foo Fighters especially and a few other bands, that uh, rock bands that have been around for 20 plus years is they need to figure out how to fit within what they can do. Basically, dress for your age, more or less. You don't want to go to H&M when you're 75 and try to fit into a dress that maybe you could have fit into 1967, but in 2021, that shit doesn't look good on you, honey. Mm -hmm. And stuff like that, that you have the right ideas, but you need to be able to do something that doesn't date you too much. It's the same thing with like just our face and Doom, even though obviously Doom can't make anything else. But... It's trying to figure out where do you fit now? Because yeah. you, a, you can make fantastic music as an older musician. I mean, some of my favorite band is 
all, most of them are all in their 50s and they make some of the best shit. More on that later. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that you can do as an older artist where you can make fantastic stuff. Um, it's been out there, it's been released, and even in this decade it's been done. But that's something that I think that with Dinosaur Jr. that they kind of went back into their younger days and everything and kind of were stuck into that into that sound where they can't really push much forward. They trap themselves in there and it's a decent effort and for what it is, it's in that middle stage of Uncle Rocky, but it's nothing that is crazy or anything. It's hard yeah. because we like last year we had so many good works of it. So Yeah. I think maybe ten minutes shorter. And even as it is, it's a nice like listen and a playthrough. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely a good playthrough, but it's not it's not super inspiring, but it's not super depressing, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um I mean, like, depending on how you read into the songs, like, oh, it can be sure. like the 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 feeling for it can be depressing. That can be like totally fine if you're like wanting that vibe for music. But um, it's overall a, a it could have benefited from being a little bit shorter and not like fully embracing the uncle rap nature, uncle rock nature of it. Yeah, exactly. So this is the first real one we've had this year, and. Yeah, there's still some good, there's still a lot of um, stuff that needs to be improved upon upon these artists and stuff. So uh, I believe you'll have some more works. I believe Foo Fighters are going to release a whole album, I think, this year. Um, some stuff too. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with uh, more on that on people's sounds and everything. I know Dave Grohl did like a documentary on them and stuff yeah. as well that came out this year. So Indie but is like what rock music sounds like. And because of Indie's like um, willingness to bring in new sounds and new genres yes. and new people, it's, all that's, it, that's like true. you're making it sound a lot better. And so um, the best these like old rock heads can do is like, Pass the torch, right? Exactly. Um, or, or they're just like kind of spending around it here. Exactly. Or my favorite thing is like what Incubus has done, and you make small little EPs of three or four songs, and you just knock it out of the park with that. Because if you may try to make a whole 45 to an hour long thingy, or you do the Smashing Pumpkins where you make three hours long of an album, and you're like, dog, that's a lot of Billy Corgan. Like, you need to take 20% off there, Billy. Extremely. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. But, anyways, arbitrary on. scale. Arbitrary scale, NHL fines. Um, this is $2,000 $2, fine for charging a goalie and giving him a concussion. Okay, this is one of those, I'm going to give this one of those like classics where um, like in 2007 NHL when you can like actually still get away with <laughs> fights, but they would still like, if you're through the first punch or one look particularly like kind of like unclean even in a boxing arena, mm -hmm. you would get fined for that in addition to the penalty box. And that fine like, is max $2,000 still? Even uh, I think it's max five. Ma max, max five? five. I think it was 3500 3500 I like it. It's, it's like in the middle. It's a clean fight, but come on. Come on now. We have stands. It's like, come on now. Exactly. Yeah. It's like the refs are trying to break it up, but you still slam the dude's head on the ice. It's like, <laughs> it's like hey, 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 we get it. You won. Like, chill. Yeah. 